Pichon Lalonde and Pichon Baron started out as one combined winery way back in 1694. In 1760, Baron Joseph du Pichon Longueville began managing this estate when he was only 19 years old. Joseph continued to manage the estate for an impressive 70 years until he was 90 years old. At that time, which was around 1850, Joseph was on his deathbed and decided to bequeath his estate to his five children. Joseph wanted to be fair to everyone, and so he gave his two sons two-fifths of the vineyards and his three daughters the other three-fifths. A short time later, in 1855, the 1855 classification of Bordeaux came out. And in that classification, both Pichon Lalande and Pichon Baron were classified as second growths. Unlike Pichon Lalande, Pichon Baron was not a producer that had a record of consistency and excellence dating back to the 1960s. In fact, Pichon Baron was known as a perennial underachiever from the early 1960s until the mid to late 1980s. That all changed in 1987 when the new ownership installed the Lynchbosch proprietor as the manager of Pichon Baron. Almost immediately, the quality began to improve. These improvements were accomplished through several initiatives. First, the grapes were harvested later. Second, there was a more strict selection of fruit. Third, there was a second wine introduced. And fourth, there was a higher percentage of new oak used for the maturation process. These initiatives paid off almost immediately, and the 89 and 1990 vintages of Pichon Baron were outstanding. Beginning with the 2009 vintage, the Pichon Baron quality level took another huge step forward, and they've been producing exceptional wines ever since. And there's really no reason that Pichon Baron should not produce an exceptional wine. They're located very close to Chateau Latour, which arguably has the best terroir on all of the left bank. In addition, the Pichon Baron vineyards have gravel soils in southern exposure that are ideally situated to the production of high quality Cabernet Sauvignon. The Pichon Baron style is a balance between power and elegance. It's definitely a wine that's been, historically at least, more structured and powerful than the Pichon Lalande wines. Pichon Baron has 73 hectares of vineyards that are planted to 65% Cabernet Sauvignon, 30% Merlot. 3% Cabernet Franc, and 2% Petit Verdot. The Cabernet Franc and Petit Verdot is not used in the top wine, however. These grapes are used only in the second wines for Pichon Baron. As with most producers these days, the vineyards are farmed on a plot-by-plot -plot basis, and they vinify not only on a parcel-by-parcel -parcel or plot-by-plot -plot basis, but also by grape variety. One reason for the huge increase in quality around 2009-2010 is the fact that Pichon Baron has been much more stringent with its selection process than it was in years past. In addition to implementing an optical sorting machine that helps them to eliminate fruit that does not meet their high standards, they've just generally been using a much lower percentage of the harvest in their top wine. In 2000, for example, they used to produce 30,000 cases of the top wine, but more recently, they're producing only about half that amount. Pichon Baron produces three different wines. The first of which I'll be discussing is the top wine. The top wine comes from old vines on historic plots that were used to produce wine way back in 1694. Pichon Baron is a powerful, intense, concentrated wine, but it also has some elegance. It's capable of aging effortlessly in the cellar for decades. Recent vintages are extraordinarily impressive and typically score in the high 90s. The recent vintages have been a little softer and a little bit more approachable in their youth than past vintages, but it's still definitely much better with substantial aging on it. In terms of price, the top wine often sells for around $175 a bottle for more recent vintages. And as mentioned, the top wine is generally a blend that consists of only two grapes, Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. The 2020 vintage, for example, is 75% Cabernet Sauvignon and about 25% Merlot. With respect to the maturation process, there's typically 18 months on average of aging in 70% new French oak and 30% one-year-old oak barrels. If you're interested in wine recommendations, wine collecting strategies, and learning more about wine, please do subscribe to my channel. I've been collecting wine for more than 15 years and also have a level 4 diploma from the WSET. 
so I have both formal certification as well as substantial practical knowledge from the School of Hard Knocks. Pichon Barome produces two different second wines, and the first of which is the Le Terrel du Longueville, and has been sold since about the mid-1980s. This wine has a higher percentage of Merlot than the top wine, and also uses the Cabernet Franc that's produced by Pichon Barome. A representative example is a recent vintage that had around 65% Merlot, around 28-29% Cabernet Sauvignon, and about 7% Cabernet Franc. This is a wine that enters its drinking window with about three to five years of additional bottle aging after release, and one that you can enjoy for up to 15 years or so. It's a wine that's generally highly acclaimed by critics and which sells for only around $42 or so a bottle. So definitely a compelling value and one that you want to keep an eye on as it's hard to do better than that in terms of price to quality ratio. The other second wine was just introduced in 2012, namely Le Griffon du Pichon Baron. This is a wine that's made in a more modern style and it's also an excellent value. It does cost a little bit more than the other second wine. This one sells for around $55 or $60 a bottle. This wine contains about 50% Merlot, 42% Cabernet Sauvignon, and then the third grape for this wine is the Petit Verdot. So there's no Cabernet Franc in this wine, and the bulk of the Petit Verdot that's produced by Pichon Baron goes into this wine. This is one that you can enjoy young, or it can be aged for up to two decades as well. So another excellent value and one that would be an appropriate seller defender and give you lots of flexibility given the fact that you can enjoy it either young or with additional age. With respect to my buying strategy for Pichon Barone, if you can find a reasonable price on the 1990, I highly recommend picking it up. That's an absolutely outstanding wine and one that I've been enjoying for more than a decade and which still shows well to this day. In addition, I would not hesitate to purchase the 2009 and 2010 vintages, and then you can buy with confidence from 2014 to the present as well, as Pichon Barone has been on a tremendous hot streak the past six or seven vintages. Better still, with Pichon Barone, the prices are even lower than for Pichon Lalonde. I found some single bottles, for example, selling for around $175 a bottle, while this is certainly not inexpensive, it's definitely a relative bargain compared to some of the first growth Bordeaux and also compared to lots of Napa Cabernet Sauvignon, for example. And for those who don't want to wait for this wine to mature or who don't want to pay that much for a bottle of wine, I highly recommend the two Pichon Baron second wines. You really can't go wrong with either one of them as they both offer compelling value for the price. Pichon Baron and Pichon Lalande are both super second Bordeaux producers. If you'd like to learn more about Super Seconds, be sure to check out my Super Second Bordeaux video, 